All our glory to the Lord. Oh, yeah. We give all our glory to the Lord. All our glory to the Lord. All our glory to the Lord. Our Father, we want to bless you this morning because you are God. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration because they belongs to you. That it be exalted in the name of Jesus. We have come, O Lord, to look at your word. That it please teach us by yourself in the name of Jesus. Amen. Speak to us expressly in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give us understanding. Amen. Give us revelation Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That it, as we go into the scripture properly, let your presence go with us. And every spirit that may want to manipulate or misrepresent your word in any way, that it will command them to go into bondage in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Uh, good morning, everyone. As many that are hearing us from online, you are welcome to Believers Academy. This is a place where we dig deep into the word of God. And I am trusting God. That this very morning, the Almighty God is going to speak to you, is going to touch your life, and is going to turn your life around in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the topic before us this morning is the plan to kill Paul. The plan to kill Paul. So we are going to look at who want to kill Paul. What are their plan? What are their strategy? Why did they want to kill Paul? And my prayer is that the Almighty God will give each and every one of us understanding in the name of Jesus. So let's go properly to it. Let's go to the memory verse. The memory verse. Acts 23 verse 12. Acts 23 verse 12. Let's read it together. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a cause, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Praise the Lord. You know, people have great plans in life to impart life, to transform life, to change destiny. But unfortunately, these sets of people, their own plan is to kill. Their own plan is to take life. Their own plan is to destroy. They don't have good plan. They have terrible plan. That is why there are people that have different kind of plan. You might be surprised. Don't be surprised, rather. Don't be surprised that things like this still happen till today. There are people that they don't have good plan. The plans that they have is the evil one. But my prayer is that each and every one of us we are not going to be victim in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Enemy will not succeed Amen. in taking away your life or my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said last week, our test is going to be in chapter 23. Acts chapter 23 from verse 1 to 22. Because of our time, we are going to stop at verse 22. We are going to read it as we go into the scripture. So let's wait a little bit now. Let's go to our introduction. Introduction. I said last week we study how Apostle Paul defended himself against Jewish allegations and the Roman examination. We know that they alleging that they taught people wrong doctrine. He was teaching people not to obey the, the law of Moses and the Romans, after they have had everything, they want to flog him. They want to examine. When they say they want to examine him, is that they want to flog him. And Apostle Paul, he defended himself. He exonerated himself based on the knowledge that he had. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. And today we are going to study the plan okay. of the Jews to kill Paul. It is my prayer. That the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The outline of today is going to be divided into two. 
is going to be divided into two parts. The first one is Paul divided the council. Paul divided the council. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Paul divided the council. Let somebody pick up his Bible and turn to the book of Acts chapter 23. And I want us to read from verse 1 to verse 11. Paul divided the council. The one that came to Jeremiah. And Paul. And Paul. Endlessly beholding the council. Yes. He said, mm -hmm. men and brethren. Men and brethren. I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. Yes. And the high priest Ananiah commanded them. Yes. That stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just wait a little bit there. I said, as Apostle Paul appeared before the council, the question is that who are this council? The council of elders, the council of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, including the high priest. Can you imagine the church gather up, gang up against individual who is doing the right thing? Praise the Lord. So they invited him to come and talk, to come and defend himself before the council. But one, there are a couple of things that I want us to take out of this very, this very uh, chapter. And the first one is in that verse 1. Verse 1. Can somebody read that verse 1 again for us? Um, well, I want us to journey through it step by step. Yes. And Paul. And Paul. Endlessly beholding the council. Endlessly beholding. The council. The council. It's okay, man. Endlessly beholding. Bible say endlessly. Bible did not say that he just beholded. He said he earnestly behold the, the council. What does that tell us? He tell us that he examined them. He look before he talk. The lesson that each and every one of us needs to take away from this place is that don't just talk. Look at people. Not everybody deserves your words. You have to look before you talk. There are people, no matter what to say, they don't want the good of you. There are people that hated you naturally. There are people like that. Bible say, Apostle Paul stood before the council, the book of Acts chapter 23, verse 1. He stood and he beholden earnestly. Praise the Lord. We must not be stupid. Amen. May we not reveal the secret of our life to our enemies in the name of Jesus. He was standing before people that hated him. Not people that just want certain evil to happen. People that want to take away his life. People that thought that he does not deserve to be living. He was standing before them. So we can see the reason why this man endlessly beholding the, the council. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 2 of that place told us what happened. After he made his first statement, you know the kind of people that he was up to. Verse, let me read verse 1 and 2 so that we get a picture of that place. Yes, ma'am. 1 and 2. Yes. And, and Paul. And Paul. Endlessly beholding the council. Endlessly beholding the council. Said. Said. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. And I have lived in all good conscience. I have lived in all good conscience. Before God unto this day. Before God unto this day. And the high priest and an eye When the day. high priest, you know we have the priest and we have the high priest. We only have one high priest. The high priest, the Ananiah, that particular time was the high priest. When he heard what he said, <laughs> when he heard this, what did he do? Yes, ma'am. What did he say? Commanded them that he told people that around him that stood by him that to, stood by Paul to smite him on to the mouth. slap him on the mouth. On the mouth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said they should slap and they slap him. I want to look at the kind of situation that Apostle Paul found himself in the midst. They don't even allow him to even conclude his false statement. False statement. He received slap for it. Praise the Lord. What did he do? Verse 3 of that place. Then, what did he do? Yes, ma'am. Then said Paul 
unto him. Then said Paul unto him. God shall smite thee. Then Paul reacted. There's no one that can receive a very odd slap like that. That will not want to do what? Want to react. So, with all the anointing in Paul, Paul do what? He reacted. Yes. He said, God do what? Go <laughs> read that place again, man. Then said God Paul unto then him. Then said Paul unto him. God shall smite thee. He said, God will smite thee too. Thou witted world. Thou witted world. For sittest thou to judge me after the law. You seated to judge me after the law. And commandest me to be smiting contrary to the law. Which is contrary to the law. You know, Apostle Paul was a lawyer. He knows what the law says. When you are when you are disciplining someone before you even hear what that person will say. You are condemning someone before you even hear. What the person is about to say. You are judging someone. Nobody just tell you certain things about some people. And you just go ahead judging them. Apostle Paul was say, this is wrong. But verse 4, what happened in verse 4? Yes, ma'am. And they that stood by said. And people that stood by him said. Why let thou go high priest? Are you violating the high priest of the Lord? Then said Paul. And Paul now remember, yes, what did he say? I wish not. I wish not. Brethren. Brethren. That he was the high priest. That he was the high priest. Because it is written. Because it is written. That I shall not speak evil of the That you shall not speak evil of the ruler of thy of people. The ruler of thy people. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul quickly do what? He walked the world. He walked it backwards. Praise the Lord. He withdrew that statement. Because he knew the law. That is why when you meet a lawyer, lawyer will be very, very careful because they know how they can trap you and they don't want to be trapped with that one. So what do you do? He quickly withdrew the state. I don't know because he knows what the word says. The law said you cannot speak evil of the ruler because they can use that one to attack him, to kill him. He quickly do what? He withdrew that. But the question is, what Apostle Paul said, was it enough? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Was it enough? I said when he realized that he had <clears throat> attacked the high priest, he apologized. He apologized. Let's go to verse 6. But wherefore perceived that the one part was shut. Now he knows that he's more or less in trouble now. Praise the Lord. He was in a very difficult situation. And Apostle Paul now need to use his knowledge. You know, we talk about knowledge, we talk about wisdom in this place, and this is the month of divine wisdom. Now, Apostle Paul has to do something to get out of the trouble that he has already entered by insulting, abusing the high priest. Praise the Lord. So, how did he escape the trap? Let's continue, man. Yes, man. And, and the other Pharisees. And the other Pharisees. He cried out in the council. He cried out in the council. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. I'm Pharisee. I am Pharisee. The son of the Pharisee. The son of the Pharisee. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead. Can you start from verse 5, man, so that we get the picture of that place? Then said Paul. Then said Paul. I wish not. I wish not. Brethren. Brethren. That he, that he was the high priest. That he was the high priest. For he, it is written. What is written? Thou, sh thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of your people. But when Paul perceived that. But when Paul, Paul when he perceived that. The one part was seduces. That those counsel, they are not just one. They were divided. They, he has seduces and the Pharisees. And the other Pharisees. And the other Pharisees. He cried out in the council. He cried out in the council. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. I am a Pharisee. I am a Pharisee. The son of the Pharisee. The son of the Pharisee. Of the hope and resurrection of, of the, the dead. Of the hope and the resurrection of the dead. I yeah. call the question. Which I am called to be questioned. And when he has so said. And when he has so said. There arose a dissension between the Pharisee and the Sadducees. Yes, ma'am. And the multitude was divided. It divided them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the world. That's what they call divide and rule. Praise the Lord. There are some people that use it. Even there are some pastors that use it. They will divide in order to, to lead the church. Praise the Lord. So that member will continue to fight against each other. Yes. Workers will continue to fight against each other. Why nobody will see them as the one that is causing the trouble. Praise the Lord. That's not a good one anyway. But Apostle Paul need to use his knowledge. Now, 
Looking at this place, Apostle Paul, he knew who the Pharisees are. He knew what the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he knew what they believe in. And he knows the differences between them. Now, he need to identify with one part. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So, by identifying with the Pharisees, he divided, he divided the council. Praise the Lord. Has I been a lawyer? You remember that there is no ignorance in the law. Therefore, he need to do something. He perceived that the council was made up of two groups of people with different schools of thought and beliefs. He took advantage of the knowledge and cried out that he was a Pharisee who believed in the resurrection of the dead and that that was the basis of his cross-examination. By saying that, the council was divided. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It divided the council. It divided that council. So, instead of them to face one now, they face each other. May God confuse your enemy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May their come be baptized with confusion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Number six, fact from that bit. I said Paul was rescued from the Jews by the captains. Yes, let's continue from where you stop now. Yes. But the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. They say there is no resurrection. Neither angel. Yes. No spirit. Yes. But the Pharisees confess both. But Pharisees believe that there is resurrection, there is angel. Yes. And there arose a great cry. Yes. And the, and the scribes. And the scribes. The hour of the Pharisees. Yes. Fat rose mm -hmm. and strove. Yes. Say, mm -hmm. we find no evil in this man. We find no evil in this man. But if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. Yes. Let us fight. Let, let us not fight against God. Let's not fight against God. And when there arose a great dis, 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 dissension, dissension, yes. The chief captain, the chief captain, very less, very less. Paul should have been pulled in pieces of death. Yeah, because this one is pulling Paul. This one is pulling Paul. Then he came to Paul's rescue. Commanded the soldier to go down. And, yes. And to take him by force from among them. Yes. And to bring him into the castle. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Paul was rescued from them. May God save you from the hand of your enemy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May God save us from the hand of the wicked. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I said, then God appeared to Paul and consoled him that he will testify for him in Rome as he does in Jerusalem. Can we read it to verse 11? And the night following. And the night following. The Lord stood by him. The Lord stood by him. And said, and said Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Paul. Paul. For as thou hast testified of me for, in Jerusalem. For as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem. So must thou bear witness. Of, so of must Christ. thou bear witness at rule. at rule. Now the question is, how did he testify? How did he testify uh, about God in Jerusalem? Praise the Lord. How? He testified about God in Jerusalem by by in shame. Praise the Lord. So, what God was telling him that, no, Paul, you are not going to die because death is not part of the package now. So, you testify in shame. And the same way you are going to testify in Rome, in what? In shame. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. God will give us more understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's quickly go to the second part, which is the main topic that we are considering today. The plan to kill Paul. Let's read from verse 12 to verse 20, 20, 22. Let's read verse 12 to 13 first. I said there are facts in this passage of the Bible that I want us to consider. Yes, and and when, it was day, when it was day, certain of the Jews binded together. Certain of the Jews binded together. And bound themselves. They bound themselves. Under a cause. Under a cause. Saying that they will neither eat nor drink. They said they are not going to eat nor drink. Till they had killed Paul. Till they had killed Paul. And they were more than 40. They, they said they are more than 40. Which had made this conspiracy. 40 people. What can Paul do in the midst of 40 people? That are determined. What can he do? They buy. Can you imagine? These are Jews. 
And these are the people that claim to have known the Lord. If you know what some believers are doing, people of the church, if you know, you will be shocked at what they do, at their fellow brethren. But the Bible told us that their plan failed. Every plan of the wicked over your life will fail in the name of Jesus. Amen. It will not prosper. Amen. Say it will not prosper. Amen. Say it will not prevail. I said people put themselves under a curse. Can you imagine? People put themselves under a curse that they are not going to eat. They are not going to drink until they keep up. Amen. Amen. The second one, I said the people, not only did they put themselves under that curse, they took it to the next level by informing the authorities. They informed, yes, let's look at the people informed the chief priest about their oath and their plan. Verse 14. And they came to the chief priest. They came to the chief priest. And elders. And the elders. And said. And said. We have bound ourselves under a great cause. They said they have bound themselves under a great cause. That we will, that we will not, that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. So they said they are not going to eat. They are fasting to kill. Can you imagine? People fasted to kill. They said, we have put ourselves on that course that they are not going to eat until they keep up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So they informed them. Now, let's now go to the next one. I said, then, not only did they inform him, then they explained to the high priest how they are going to execute their plan. Can you see how wicked people are? They taught it. They agreed. They informed the authorities that can make it happen, and they explain how it's going to happen. I don't know what they have concluded against your family, concluded against you in the coven of darkness, in the company and the garden of man. The Almighty God will cancel them and scatter them in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. They will not prosper, Amen. and they will not prevail Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Can you read verse 15 for us? Now, therefore, now, therefore, the council signify to the chief captain yes. that he bring him down unto you. Tell the tomorrow. chief captain to bring Paul unto yes. you tomorrow. Yes. As, th as though eh? you will inquire something more perfectly. As if you want to inquire more from Paul. Concerning him. Yes. And we. And we. Whenever he come near. And when we notice that he's coming. Are ready to kill him. We are ready to kill him. And when Paul's sister son had of It is okay, life, man. Praise the Lord. You see, you see how people are planned. You don't know their plan, that they are planned for you this month. They have chosen the day that they are going to do it. I pray the day the enemy is waiting for in your life. That day will not come in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will not see the day Amen. in the name of Jesus. And they said, let it be tomorrow. Because we don't want to fast long. Praise the Lord. Let it be tomorrow. Then by tomorrow, just talk to the captain. That you want to make some kind of inquiry from Paul about his fate. He said, and as he brought him out, we will hijack the shoe. Ah, enemy will not hijack you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The kidnapper will not kidnap you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four. I said the plan was leaked. The plan of the enemy over your life and your family will be leaked in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will leak the plan Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 16. Yes, ma'am. And where Paul's sister son had of their life. Their poor nephew. It was nephew. Yes, he, he had it. That they are lying in, in wait. Yes. He went and entered into the castle. Yes. And told Paul. He reported it to Paul. Then Paul called one of the sentries. And Paul, a very wise man. If it's to be some people, they will say, hey, they are made plan to kill me. Oh. Paul didn't do that. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hey, Paul did not shout. Paul said, can you please follow? Take this boy to the captain. He has something to say. That is wisdom. I pray we will not be stupid in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Continue, ma'am. Then Paul called one of the centurions unto him yes. and said, mm -hmm. Bring this young man unto the chief captain. Yes. For he had a certain thing to tell him. Mm -hmm. So he took him yes. and brought him to and brought him to the to, and brought him to to, to the ship captain, to the ship captain mm -hmm. and said, yes. Paul, the, Paul the prisoner called me unto him. Yes, they call him prisoner now. 
Yes. And prayed me to bring this young man unto thee. Yes. Who had something to say unto thee? Yes. Then the chief captain took him by the hand. Yes. And went with him aside privately mm. and asked him, mm. What is that thou hast to tell me? Yes. And he said, And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee yes. that thou wouldest bring them for tomorrow into the council. Yes. As though they would inquire some, As some words. As though they would inquire something. Some words of him more perfectly. Yes. But, to, but do not thou yield unto them. But do not. <laughs> do not yield to them. For their, for their lie in wait. Yes. For him of them more than, more than 40 men. Yes. Which have bound themselves with an oath. Yes. That they will neither eat nor drink till yes. they keep uh, Until they keep him. Home. Yes. And now, and now they are ready. They are ready. Looking for a promise from thee. Yes. So the chief captain then let the young man depart. Yes. And charge him. Yes. See that no man that thou hast this thing to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible told us that that place, the plan of the wicked was leaked to the chief captain too. Every plan against you, the Lord will cause them to leak in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Almighty God will uncover every wicked plan against your life, against your family, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, that place told us that the, well, after the boy told the ship captain, and that is what we call knowledge. Amen. Amen. And information has been passed across to him. He now needs to apply it. And the way you apply what you know will tell whether you are a wise person or you are unwise or foolish. I pray we are not going to be foolish in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, we see from that place how that plan was uncovered. Because of our time, we are not going to continue. We are going to stop here. Tomorrow, we are going to see how that captain, the ship captain, how next week, next week, by the grace of God, next week, but how that ship captain applied the knowledge that he received from that nephew of Paul. Did they succeed in killing Paul? Did they fail? So next week, we are going to stop from uh, this place. Our conclusion, I said, beloved, we have seen the manifestation of the wisdom of God in apostle. Praise the Lord. I said, in apostle Paul's life, and how God rescued him from the trap of death. It is my prayer that God will rescue you and rescue me from the trap of the wicked this month and in this second half of the year, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And if there is anything that the enemy has planned, or that they have determined against your life, in this one, it will fail in the name of Jesus. Amen. So before we go, I have two questions. Do we have any question? Anybody with question in the house? Do we have any question at all? If we don't have any question, let me ask my own question. I said, who instructed people to slap Apostle Paul? Who? Yes. The high priest Ananiah. The high priest. And his name is Ananiah. He, he said they should slap Paul. And they slap Paul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second question is that, I said, how many Jews plan to keep Paul? How many in number? Just in average. Who can tell us? More than, more than 40 people. They, they bind themselves on that cause. They said they are not going to eat until they kill him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how can people put themselves on that cause in order to destroy life? Life that they cannot make. They put themselves on that, on that cause. I pray if there's anyone in that kind of situation over your life, over my life, they will fail in the name of Jesus. Let's bow down our head and I want you to talk to God that every plan of the wicked over my life and my family, let them fail in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every plan of the wicked over my family, over my children, let them fail in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every agenda, begin to pray that prayer. I want to pray it. Use your mouth to pray that prayer. Every agenda of the wicked for my family, for my children, let them fail in the name of Jesus. Let them not prosper in the name of Jesus. Let them fail in the name of Jesus. Let them fail in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray the prayer. Whatever they have set in motion, 
whatever they have determined, whatever they have put in place in order to take your life, in order to bring you down, let them fail in the name of Jesus. Let them not prosper in the name of Jesus. All their plan, all their trap, all their strategy for your life, for my life, for our life, it will not prosper. Pray that prayer very well. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will not fall into the trap of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, whatever they are set up for me and my family in this month, I decree and I declare that they will fail. In the name of Jesus, they will not prosper. In the name of Jesus, anywhere that they are waiting for you, waiting for me, I decree that fire of God will visit them there. Fire of God will, will, will destroy even them there. In the name of Jesus, they will wait and fail. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, we want to bless you this morning. We want to worship, we want to adore your name. Daddy, we say be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have preached your word. Daddy, we pray that by the virtue we have had today, Daddy, water that word and let the word germinate in our life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let it produce results in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and let your name alone be honored and be praised. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to rise up now as we start the service. We just concluded Believers Academy. We just started. I want you to begin to worship God this morning because He made it possible for you to make it to the presence of God. There are a lot of things that can stop you from coming, but God did not allow those things to prosper over your life. He brought you and you are healed and healthy. I want us to go ahead and worship him. I want us to go ahead and honor him. I want us to go ahead and adore him. I want us to go ahead and lift him high. I want us to go ahead and magnify his holy name. I want us to worship him. Let's lift him high. Let's magnify his holy name. Thank him for everyone that God is going to use today. Thank him for those that are on their way coming. Thank him for those that God is going to use to bless our life. Thank him because you will not go empty handed. Thank him because God is going to do wondrous things in your life, in my life. He's going to touch our life. He's going to transform our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to worship him. Begin to honor him. Begin to reference him. Thank him for his name. We walk on that. Thank him for his blood. We walk on that. Thank him for his power in the name of Jesus. Give him glory. Give him honor. Daddy will bless you worship. Daddy will adore your name. Daddy will lift you high. Daddy will magnify your name. Daddy you are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you for every vessel that you are going to use O oh Lord. We thank you Lord my God for your name. That we walk on that. We thank you for your word. We thank you Lord my God. For your power, we thank God, Lord my God, for your wonders, we thank God, Lord my God, for your miracle, for what you have determined to do today in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to pray to God that Father, don't let me go empty and there today. Don't let me go empty and there today. Do something. Do something new. Do something new in my life today. Do something new in my life. Do something new. Do something new in my life today in the name of Jesus. Don't let me go empty handed. Don't let me go empty handed. Don't let my family go empty handed. Give me a touch that will transform my life. If there is any issue that follow me here, even to your presence, that it destroy them in the name of Jesus. Let them not return back, even with me. Back home in the name of Jesus. Let me have an encounter with you in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray unto the Lord. That it touch my life in the name of Jesus. And they pass you. That they might follow me here. Let your fire destroy them in the name of Jesus. Any problem that might follow me here. Let your fire that it destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, do something new in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray the prayer to the Lord. Touch my life and turn it around. Touch my life and turn it around. Touch my life and turn it around. Touch my life and turn it around in the name of Jesus. Touch my life and turn it around in the name of Jesus. Every power that may want to walk against the Sabbath, let them be frustrated. Let them be disappointed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, we bless you this morning because you are God. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. Let it be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have come today, Lord my God, to fellowship. Daddy, we have come, Lord my God, to serve you. Daddy, I therefore pray, let your presence. Let it take control today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every vessel, oh my God, that I hear, fill them with your presence. Amen. Fill them with your power. Amen. Fill them with your glory. Amen. We hand over everything that you might take over. 
Daddy, take control in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let no man be glorified but you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let Satan not receive the glory, yeah. but let the glory go to you yeah. and to you alone. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let that will be hope, oh Lord yeah. my God. Yeah. And let there be release of power. Yeah. Everyone you will use them mighty and yeah. bring to the glory of your name yeah. and to the shame of the devil. Yeah. As we proceed, proceed with yeah. us. In Jesus' of filling name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Let's begin to wave our hands to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. Let's appreciate Him. Let's thank Him for today's service. Let's honor Him. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him adoration. Let's thank Him because He's worthy of our thanksgiving, He's worthy of our praise. May His name be praised forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You are here. Moving in the midst, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, walking in this place. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. You are here.
be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord, the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord, the Lord has made. I say this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm not 
worship it. Let's begin to honor this God. Let's begin to exalt him. Let's begin to magnify his holy name. For it's God over your life. It's God over my life. It's God over every situation. There is no situation that is beyond this control. I want to worship it. I don't know if you have any burden in your heart. I want to worship it. I want to worship it. And you will see the problem dancing out of your life. I want to worship it. Tell him that he's God. Tell him that he's God. Tell him that he's God. Worship it. Worship it. In the shaking of his glory. Worship it. And salt him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. You are great time to worship. You are great to worship. Worship it. The Bible says, God and silence. Make some praises unto him. And jokes were broken out of their life. Make some praises unto him. And their prison doors were open. Make some praises unto him. And they become free from the shakes and the shackles of the enemy. I want to worship him. It's God. It's not a man. Maybe you thought it's God. Maybe you thought it was a man. Maybe you thought our God is man. It's not a man. Worship him as God. See him as God. Imagine him as God. Because he's God. And he will only do. Only what God can do. Worship him and exalt him. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Say something nice to him. If I am to be you, I will say he's the half. He's the omega. He's the lily of the valley. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the Jehovah Jireh. He's the Jehovah Nisi. He's the Jehovah Shalom. He's our God. Our King. The reigning King. The God that was. The God that is. The God that is to God. The God that knows the end. Right from the beginning. The immovable God. The immutable God. The unshakable God. The reliable God. The God that made things. They will not put for a sinner. They brought something out of nothing. It's God. It's God. It's God. It's God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You are going to say, Father, Father out of my nothing, bring something out of me. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Out of my nothing. I don't know where they are relegated to. I don't know what the people are said about you. I don't know how they have seen you. But Lord, I have come to you. I present myself. I present my life. Out of my nothing, oh Lord my God. Pray something out. Bring 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 something out. In the name of Jesus. Bring something out, O Lord. Bring something out of my nothing. In the name of Jesus. Daddy, bring something out. Out of this house. Daddy, bring glory. Daddy, out of this house. Daddy, bring great and mighty thing. In the name of Jesus. My Father, my Father. I pray, O Lord, my God, that we will bring glory out of my nothing. In the name of Jesus. Father, do so, Lord, my God. In the name of Jesus. Father, do so, Lord, my God. In the name of Jesus. Father, do so, Lord, my God. In the name of Jesus. The King of kings. The Lord of God, the Ajanda Daya, the Rose of Sharon, the Jehovah Jari, bring something out in the name of Jesus. Father, do so in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. No, seven is the number of perfection. I don't know what is imperfect in your life, but you have come to the perfect goal. You are going to pray to God, say, Father. Visit every imperfection of my life today and make them perfect. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. Every imperfection in my life that I pray today, in the name of Jesus, visit them all. Oh, that is visit them all. That is visit them all. That is visit them all. In the name of Jesus, and make them perfect. Every imperfection of our life, of our home, of our family, even of this house, that is made them perfect. In the name of Jesus, Father, do so, Lord my God. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. You are going to pray. We are the second half of the year. You will pray to God. Say, Father, Father every, battle every battle that want to join in with me in this second half, let the head open his mouth and swallow them. Every battle that refuse to give up over the case of my life, let the head open his mouth. And swallow it. Every stubborn pursuer that said they are not going to come back, 
control, pursue my life, pursue my destiny, let the head go this one and swallow it. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray. My God and my God, this is the second half. The second half determine the winner. The second half determine the victor. That in this second half, every person that want to join you with me, join you with at this house, join you with anyone under the sound of my voice, I command the head to open his mouth and swallow them. In the name of Jesus, swallow them, swallow them, swallow them, swallow them, swallow them. Every stubborn pursuer that said they are not going to come, that said they are not going to give up over the case of my life, that did let the head to open his mouth and swallow them now. That is swallow them, that is swallow them, that is swallow them, that is swallow them. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You are going to say, Father, my vessel is available. Fill it with spirit of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I want to go in this second hour with your wisdom. I want to manifest the great wisdom of the most high God. Lift up your voice and pray. My vessel is available. Ah, and in this one, this second hour, my vessel is available. Fill me all up with the spirit of wisdom. Daddy, feel me. 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 That you feel me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Ask something from God. You have come to meet with God, not with man. Ask something from God. Don't play. Ask. Ask. This might be the moment you have been waiting for. Ask. This might be the opportunity you have. Ask. Ask something. Ask something from God, not from man. Because man is limited. God is unlimited. Man is limited in resources. Man is limited in knowledge and wisdom. But God is unlimited. Ask. 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 You have come to meet with God. You have come to meet with God. And you, you have burden in your life. Thank God to lift the burden. Are you in shame? Are you in pain? Thank God to take it away. Ah, is there any conspiracy against your life? Thank God to scatter them. Talk to the most I go in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration, Lord. That you will say be exalted in the name of Jesus. That we have come to fellowship this morning and we pray from nothing. And I pray of our life that it brings something out in the name of Jesus. Where people have looked down on us, that is. Let them look up unto us Amen. in this second half. In the name of Jesus, Amen. where we have failed in the first half of this year, in the second half, oh Lord, that He give us, oh Lord, my God, outstanding success. In the name of Jesus, Amen. and is there anyone, oh Lord, my God, that said they are not going to turn back over the case of our life? Is there anyone that said they are not going to give in? Is there anyone that said they are not going to surrender? Is there anyone that they said that they have determined and concluded? That until they destroy our life, that they are not going to turn back. In this second, let the earth open its mouth and swallow them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Wherever the enemy is waiting for you and I, in this second half of the year, I command Father to go ahead of us and to consume them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every strength hand, I want to join you with anyone under the sound of my voice. In this second half, I command them to dry up. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Daddy, we hand over the service unto you. Take control in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless our life. Amen. And that glory goes to you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's have a seat. Restoration House, the place of new identity and unlimited testimonies. We are family founded on love and running with the heavenly vision. Indeed, we are honored to have you with us and we pray that God of Restoration will restore all that you have lost in the past years in Jesus' name. Midweek services goes thus. Restoration Hour will be every Monday, 6.45 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. Join us in-house or online at 425-436-6357. And the passcode is 
999 pound. Reflection hour will be every Wednesday, 6.45 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. Join us in house or online at 425-436-6357. And the password is 597-999 pound. Our Sunday services goes thus. Believers Academy is every Sunday between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. Refreshing hour is right after every Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Our special services will be the first and the last, every first and last of the month, 6.45 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. Join us in-house or online at the same phone number, which is 425 Four three six six three five seven passcode five nine seven nine 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 pound. We do have two Michelle Lua every first Saturday of the month, nine a.m. to ten a.m. Join us at the same phone number again. It is four two five four three six six three five seven, and the passcode is five nine seven nine 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 pound. We do have a special online prayer, Women That Pray, every second Saturday of the month, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Join us, or join us online at the same phone number. Family prayers will be every Sunday evening, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can also join us online on that. Um, that will be online only at the same conference line phone number. The church needs uh, volunteers in children class, choir, ushering, and prayer department. Please give us feedback via our email, which is restorationhouseb at gmail.com or via this numbers 443-851-0700 or 667-305. 0135. Prayer request. For any prayer request, please send to our email at restorationhouseb at gmail.com or through the same phone numbers 443-851-0700 or 667-305-0135. You have a blessed day and thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we rise up as we take our way in? I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Was 
special love towards us. Daddy, we are what we are today because of your love. We are life because of your love. Daddy, we are not taking it for granted. Daddy, I will return the glory back to you, please, Lord. Accept it in the name of Jesus. Daddy, as we look at your word, Daddy, speak to us. Expressly in the name of Jesus. Give us understanding. Give us revelation. And the grace to apply this word that he gives to us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed it. And amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Come to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you are welcome to the presence of God. In the presence of my God, there is fullness of joy. And that joy will not elude you today. In the name of Jesus. The joy of God will not bypass you. Say it will not bypass you. 
I want to as well use this video to welcome those that are watching us online. We welcome you again to Restoration House Baltimore. This refreshing, refreshing hour. And this is a place where we get refreshed with the word of God. It's time for the word of God. We are going to continue from where we stopped last week. But I will just, I will just recap so that some of us that are not part of the service, we will know where we started from so that we will not lose you. Praise the Lord. Amen. The topic that we consider and that we are going to continue with today and possibly maybe next week is the principality. The principality. You know, in the book of Proverbs 4 7, Solomon the man who happened to be the wisest king that ever lived in his generation, he concluded by saying that among the things in this world, that there are things that are principal. And the one that taught the least is wisdom. Proverbs 4, 7. Let's read it together. Wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that I get it, get what? Understanding. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Last week I told us that it is not enough for us to have knowledge. Knowledge is good. But knowledge can be useless if we don't put it to use. And I told us, we, last week we journeyed through the word of God and we see different channels of knowledge. How we can acquire knowledge. How we can possess knowledge. And we look at it from about seven different channels. The first one that we mentioned last week, for those that wasn't here, was experience. And we told us last week that experience can be good and experience can be bad. And we told us that experience can be personal and you can learn as well from the experience of others, both good and the bad. And it can be positive and it can as well be negative too. We told us, number two, that Education is another channel of, of knowledge. Education. And it can be vocational, it can be academic, and it can be professional education. But we know not everybody that go to school are wise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not everybody that are well learned manifested the wisdom. Three, I said customary knowledge. What does that tell us? The one that we acquire through our culture. Our culture tells us, teaches us certain things. So it's another channel. Another channel of knowledge. What we learn from our parents, what we learn from our tribe, what we learn from where we came from. Everybody receive one thing or the other. Even we might come from the same nation, we are not from the same tribe. We are not from the same house. We are not from the same parents. And all the things that we gathered, those are cultural knowledge. These are the things that uh, we call another channel of knowledge. Four, religion knowledge or religious knowledge. As that is based on our faith in God, the supreme. For example, many of us, we are in the church. You are going to take something away. We listen to preaching. A song that belongs to another, another, another religion. Our religion teaches us certain things. We get knowledge through, through our religion. The fifth one that we mentioned last week was the spiritual knowledge. The spiritual knowledge, which is a little bit different from what we have in the church. I said spiritual knowledge are the one that come through inspiration and through revelation. When you sleep and God shows you certain things, it is spiritual. Not that somebody teaches you. When you are walking and God opens your eyes, you have a trust. That is spiritual. So, we are, or sometimes you can just have some kind of knowing within you that you don't even know. You can't explain it. And before you know all these things, they do what? They have one impact or the other in our, in our life. The N6. I said personal research. You do personal research, you look at certain things. Why is this thing like this? 
Why are they not doing this thing in my home? Why are they not doing this thing in my family? Why is this thing taboo? Then you go into personal research. You read, you study, you investigate, you question, you query certain things. Personal research. These are the things you acquire by yourself because you want to know, you want to advance, you want to in in increase your, your knowledge. That's another channel of knowledge. And the seventh one that we mentioned is by exposure. You know, and I told her last week that we used to say that experience is the best teacher. But things have changed now. Experience is not the best teacher, it is the exposure. Because you can have experience, it can be a terrible experience. It can be a bad experience. Praise the Lord. So exposure matter. Exposure matter. When we travel, we have vacation, we journey from place to place. And I make reference that there are certain messages, there are certain preaching that we preach here. If you go to a, a, another location, it might not fit in there. Why? Because of exposure. And there are certain things that we can be preaching back in Africa or some other nations. And when they come to the Western world, it might not fit in. It's based on exposure. And I said exposure can be by sight, can be by hearing, and by smelling. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And where we stopped last week was on why wisdom is the principal thing. Why wisdom is the principal thing. And I told us the first point under that is that, that there is no great thing in life that doesn't require wisdom. You can think about it. If you want to, there is no great thing someone can do on this planet that will not need wisdom. There is no great thing. Physical, spiritual, whichever, vocational, you will need, you will need wisdom. Praise the Lord. And I told us that, number two, that wisdom is something that people look for. People look for wisdom. Everyone, the great, the small, the rich, the poor, everybody look for wisdom. Three, I told us that by wisdom, the world was created. That is how important wisdom is. At the creation, wisdom was there. So that means wisdom has been in existence before we are made. Because the Bible told us that God created the world. He framed it by wisdom. So at the beginning, before the beginning began, wisdom was there. So that makes wisdom to be the principal things. The fourth one that we are going to uh, continue with today is wisdom made knowledge pleasant. Wisdom make knowledge pleasant. I want us to look at the book of Proverbs 2.10. Anyone that found it, you can help us read it. You know some people, knowledge is tough. When wisdom enter into thy heart. When wisdom enter into thy heart. And knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. He said, and knowledge become what? Pleasant to thy soul. When wisdom enter. You know the reason why we find some people find difficult when they come to the academic knowledge and they try and say, oh God, this thing is too tough. They become a body. It's simply because of one thing. Wisdom. When you have wisdom, then knowledge becomes what? Pleasant. Praise the Lord. It becomes pleasant. Amen. Number four. I mean five. I said, wisdom is life. What did I call it? Wisdom is life. And I want somebody to turn to the book of Proverbs 3, verse 19 to 22. It's life. But by, by wisdom, God founded the heart. By understanding heart, he has established, he established it by understanding. By his knowledge, the depths have brought him up. Yes. And the clouds drop down the field. Yes. My son. Yes. Let not them depart from the heart. Let not them depart from thy heart. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be lived. So that so shall they be what? Life. Unto thy soul and grace to thy navel. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Wisdom is life. What does it mean? Wisdom can keep someone. Wisdom can preserve you. 
When you have wisdom, you can still live. When you have wisdom, you can still elongate your life. But when you don't have wisdom, someone can die untimely. There are a lot of people that perish untimely, not because God wants to take them home, but because they lack wisdom. For example, where we studied this morning, Apostle Paul would have died cheaply, but it was the wisdom that the man manifested that saved him. Apostle Paul knew that is knowledge. We are going to differentiate it. I hope that we permit us. He, he had the knowledge that those people that he was addressing, he had Sadducees and the Pharisees. And he knows the belief of the Sadducees and the Pharisees differ. The Sadducees doesn't believe in resurrection of life. They don't believe in the resurrection uh, of the dead. They don't believe in angels. They don't believe anything and things like that. But the Pharisees believe. And the message of Jesus that he preached is about the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So he didn't even mention Jesus. When he looked at him, I know that he's in the midst of trouble. They can kill him there. He said, I am Pharisee. Pharisees of the Pharisees. He said, the reason why they are cross-examining me is because I believe in the resurrection of the dead and life. And the Pharisees said, is that true? He said, yes. And the Pharisees said, that is not true. And he said, of them to face Paul, they turn around and they face themselves. Wisdom is life. Don't joke with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Six. The sixth one. The sixth, number six. And wisdom brings commendation. Proverbs 12, 8. The man shall be commended according to his wisdom. A man shall be commended according to what? To his wisdom. According to his wisdom. If you are wise, you will receive commendation. It brings commendation. What does it mean? People can recommend you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there are some people you cannot recommend them. You cannot. You, they can be your friend. You can't recommend them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because not that they don't have knowledge. I told you last week. Everybody has knowledge. There is no one that doesn't have knowledge. But what separates the wise from the foolish is the application of that knowledge. Is the application. There is no one that doesn't have knowledge. Even the madman have what? They have knowledge. So it is the application that makes the difference. So the question that each and every one of us need to think about is how do I apply what I know? Wisdom is the correct application of what you know. Because when I can't say knowledge, some people you may throw them off. Correct. Application of what you know, thing that daddy teach you, thing that mommy teach you, thing that your teacher teach you, all those things that they have taught us. How do you apply them? And that is what tells whether we are whether we are wise or not. The seven point. The seven point. I said that wisdom is a defense. Amen. Amen. You know when we talk about defense, it's a military word. It's a military, military word. Wisdom is a defense. If you have wisdom, you will be able to, even if you can't defend anything, you'll be able to defend yourself. Ecclesiastes 7.12 For wisdom is a defense. He said wisdom is a defense. And money is a defense. Can you see how they equate wisdom and money? So if I say wisdom is money, I am not wrong. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because the function of money is the same function that wisdom do what? Provided. Praise the Lord. Wisdom is a defense. I, know, I want us to know what we are considering is why wisdom is the principal thing. Don't forget that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Number eight. I said wisdom is better than strength. In my language, the sense 
or one to abandon. Eh? There are some people. That is why the difference between the advanced nation and the other nation is what we are talking about. When you bring a labor, praise the Lord. You bring a labor to excavate foundation of a building for you. It will carry digger, right? Yes. And shovel. Mm -hmm. And you measure it. You do the setting out and say, okay, this is how it's going to be and we continue to dig it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But in the place where we are, what are they going to use? They are going to use machine. And before you know, what machine will do in minutes? Digger will continue to dig eh? for days. And by the time you are done with the construction of your building, the digger is still doing what? Digging. Is still digging. What is he using? He is using strength. Why? In an advanced nation, they use wisdom. Praise the Lord. We have robots that produce brick, blocks. When we, in in uh, underdeveloped nation, they use human being. You know human being? They mold block, a jacket, and they carry it. Two people will carry it, right? Yes. Sometimes one person will do it. But here, you program the robot, and it will continue to produce. When we go to sleep, robot is still producing. We wake up, the robot is still producing. And that is the difference between strength and wisdom. And when we talk about somebody is making money, you said, eh, it's favor. It's not favor. It is wisdom. Because if that man, if they place two order to the other man in underdeveloped nation and an advanced nation, I said, I need one million blocks in a week's time. He took the contract from me. And I went to the other guy. I need one million blocks in a week's time. Who do you think we deliver it first? Eh? Do, uh, do you think the other one we even be able to deliver? Why? It's because of the approach. Many of us, where we're supposed to use wisdom, we are using our strength. And that is why things become very, very difficult. We are still going to get into that. In every career, there is business in it. Praise the Lord. And that is why God must open your eyes to the business in your career. Everything we do, like there is business inside of it. There is. So, wisdom is better than, better than strength. Amen. Amen. Now, I say wisdom is better than weapon of war. Which is very, very... Okay, let's, let's look at Ecclesiastes 9.18. It is good. It is good. That thou shouldn't take hold of this. Yes. Yeah. Also from the... Ecclesiastes 9.18. Wisdom, wisdom is better than weapons of... Wisdom war. is better than weapon of what? But one sinner destroyed much good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Russia and Ukraine, they go into battle. Eh? You know the difference? Russia did not cry to anybody. Eh? You can cry to every nation in the world. What do you think is the difference? It comes to the wisdom. Those guys have enough. But those guys did not have it. Praise the Lord. Now, but the wisdom of Ukraine, because Russia believed that they are just going to run them off. Within one week. They don't have the strength. They don't have the weapon. But they partner with people that have the weapon. And they supported them. And the war still continued mm -hmm. till now. Mm -hmm. And they have not overrun them. Do you see the difference between wisdom and a weapon of war? So, I want to conclude with that before I move to other things. That with wisdom, that wisdom is the principal thing. In all you're getting, get 
understanding. Now I want us to have to look at the application of the principal thing. I'm not sure we are going to finish it. We are going to continue by the grace of God. And we are going to look at the life of a man in the Bible called Joseph. We want to look at the application. I'm going to differentiate between knowledge and wisdom today. And we are going to conclude. We continue with the rest later as God uh, gives us the time. Let's look at Genesis chapter 41, verse 25 to verse 32. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh. The dream of Pharaoh is one. The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh that he is about to do. God has shown to Pharaoh what he's about to do. The seven good, the seven good nine has seven years. Yes. And the seven good years are seven years. Yes. The dream is one. Yes. And the seven things and ill for favor me. Yes. That came up after them are seven years. Yes. And the seven empty years blasted with the heat. East, yes. We shall be seven years of payment. Yes. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, do. What God is about to do. He shoot unto Pharaoh. He shoot it unto Pharaoh. Behold. It behold. There come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. Yes. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. Yes. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. Yes. And the famine shall consume the land. Yes. And the plenty and the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine. Yes. Following. Yes. For it shall be very grievous. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is knowledge. That is knowledge there. It's not yet wisdom. It is knowledge. And this knowledge is a divine knowledge. It's a spiritual. Because nobody can decode it's a code. Because of the relationship of Joseph with God. He decoded it. God revealed it to him. He decoded that is knowledge. It's not wisdom. If he only does that, he will go back to prison. Where he come from. That is knowledge. So knowledge is not profitable when it's alone. Many of us we have knowledge. But where we have challenge is how to move from the position of knowledge to the level of wisdom. Now, let's look at the wisdom of Joseph. Verse 33 to verse 37. Now therefore, now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise. Let Pharaoh look for, look at how he's packaging himself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, let Pharaoh look for a man. That is what? Discreet and, and wise. And set him over the land of Egypt. And set him, he's using his mouth to position himself. Mm. He's using his mouth to describe where he wants to be. Is describing his own position where you want to be. Is is telling Pharaoh that Pharaoh, this is the position that will be created for that one because he has looked everywhere. Everybody has occupied one seat or the other. There is no place for him, and he does not want to go back to prison again. So Joseph now needs to define, describe. His own office, he, he, don't, he is not ready to compete with anyone. So, he wants Pharaoh to create his own office. Because they don't have that office. Yes, continue, man. Let Pharaoh do this. Let Pharaoh do this. And let him appoint officer over the land. Yes. And take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt. Yes. In the seven plenteous. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come. Yes. And lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh. Yes. And let them keep food in the cities. Yes. And that and that food should be for store to the land against the seven years of famine. Yes. Which shall be in the land of Egypt. Yes. That the land perish not through the famine. Yes. And the things was good in the eyes of Why Pharaoh. is it not going to be good? <laughs> Why is it not going to be good? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It has to be good. Every one of us we know in life, there are times of famine and there are times of surplus. 
Currently, this nation is a mini research now. And someone has to be very careful how you handle some stuff. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. How you throw your money around. Things that have no value. Be very careful how you put your money in it. Things that take money. Liabilities. Liabilities. Don't put money in liabilities. Things that take away. Anything that take away. They can call it anything. It is liability. Anything that doesn't put money in your pocket. It's not an asset. Praise the Lord. It can do beautiful. It's not an asset. Car is not an asset. In fact, the house you live, it depends on the way you see it. It can be liability, it can be an asset. If you are just making payment, 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 nothing comes from it onto your pocket. It's a liability. So, Joseph said, with this knowledge, that seven plenty is coming. And after it, seven dryness, famine will follow. So this is what we need to do. Let's engage 20% savings. One fifth, 20%. Everything that is being produced and let's create storage. And let somebody manage it. And Pharaoh said, who else can do it here? Everybody occupy one thing or the other. Who else can do it? Yes, continue, ma'am. And Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find such a one as this? Can we find anyone that can do this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Yes. And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, And he said, Joseph did not go there and said that, You know, I am a pastor. I have a relationship with God. I can speak in tongues. Did he say that? No. He never mentioned that. Pharaoh said, There is Spirit of God in you. And that is the testimony I want in this house. Amen. That you will walk with people and they will smell. Ah, they said, it seems you are a Christian. Amen. I was talking with somebody during the week and he said, he walked to a place. I said, and the person said, are you a Christian? He said, how did you know? He said, because when you walk in, he said, the atmosphere of this place change. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the testimony I want from this house. That when you walk with somebody, they will find it difficult to let go. Amen. Because they know what to carry. They know you are not ordinary. They will not just carry their paper and pen. And uh, something is happening, you are the first to go. Pray, praise the Lord. Uh, they, you know there's some people that are on the list already. Any little thing that happens in the organization, they will say, you are the first to what? To go. That is not the plan of God for us. And that will never come to pass in this house. In the name of Jesus. You will be valuable in the name of Jesus. Continue with that place, man. For as much as God has shown you As much this, as God has shown you this. There is none so sick, discreet, and wise as thou art. And are. wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house. Yes. And according to According unto thy word, according unto thy word, shall all my people be ruled? Shall all my people be ruled, including Potiphar, yes. who put him in prison and forget him? And somebody offended you, you didn't even cut him. He did not sleep with your wife. Your wife said, I attempted to do, I attempted, and you put him in prison and you left him there. And this was a man that brought changes to everything you have. You did not forgive him. You left him in the prison. Abandoned him there. But when he comes to the throne of Joseph, God do what? God lifted him above Potiphar. I don't know who is looking down on you. As God lived and his spirit lived, you will be above them. In the name of Jesus. Anyone that sees your glory and they want to push you down, I decree and I declare as God liveth and he said, they will go down for you. Amen. You will go up Amen. and they will go down. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Except they change their mind. What if I did not change his mind? He left him and he abandoned him there. But when Joseph stood before him, he said, can we find what if I was there? Because he was the chief security officer. He couldn't counter it there. He couldn't. He, he cannot say, this guy is a prisoner. I put him there. This is what he's going to do if you, if you put him. He can't say. 
May God silence your enemy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Just continue, man. Only in the throne. Only in the throne. Will I be greater than will thou? Will I be greater than thou? Pharaoh said unto Joseph. Pharaoh said unto Joseph. See. See. I have set thee over all the land he of Egypt. He said, I set you above, above your employer. Above, who was his employer? Potiphar. Not even an employer. He was a slave to him. He was even less than an employee. Because in that, you can kill a slave, you can do anything with them. If a slave marry in your house as a master, the children and the wife of that slave belongs unto you. Eh? Your wealth just increase. Your labor just increase. They will continue to serve you. Because you own the slave and you own everything that he has. It's only God that can rescue the sleep. Amen. But God do what? He lifted him up. His past was forgotten. They, they couldn't say, oh, this man, oh, this man was a prisoner. He, 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 he doesn't have paper. Praise the Lord. He doesn't have paper. He, he wasn't a citizen. There are offices in this nation. If you are not a citizen, born, you cannot get. Just said, protocol was broken. God will break protocol for you in the name of Jesus. I want to rise up on your feet. You are going to pray some prayers with random. You will lift up your voice and you are going to pray to God. Say, Father, every hand that saw my glory, I want to pull me down. Let the hand wither yeah, by fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name yeah, yeah, yeah. of Jesus. Let's go your voice and begin to pray. Every hand so long by God that have the opportunity, that have the privilege to see my future, to see my glory, that want to pull me down, that is doing everything within his power to pull me down. Oh Lord, my God, let the hand dry by fire. Let the hand wither. Let the hand dry. 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 In Jesus' name. We have prayed. Say, Father, everyone ah, that want me to go down, for them to rise, let them go down for me. In the name of Jesus, let God your voice and begin to pray. Anyone that want me to go down, anyone that is angry at my rising, oh no, my Father, bring them down, bring them down for my rising, 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 bring them down for my rising. In the name of Jesus, bring them down for my rising, bring them down for my rising. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Our time is fast, man, but you are going to pray to God. The prayer we pray before you will pray it again. It's a powerful prayer. You are going to take up my vessel is available. My vessel is available. Ah, fill me with the spirit of wisdom. Ah, Lord, fill me with the spirit of wisdom. Daddy, fill me, O oh Lord, my God. Let me overflow with wisdom of God. I want to manifest, O oh Lord, your wisdom. Daddy, fill my vessel. Daddy, fill me. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. My vessel is available, Lord. My Holy Spirit, my vessel is clean. Lord, I empty myself that you might fill me. Fill me with the spirit of wisdom. Fill me, O Lord. Fill me, O Lord. Fill me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Fill me with the spirit. The spirit of wisdom. Fill me with the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Fill me with the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Fill me with the spirit. The spirit of wisdom. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. I stand upon the confession of everyone under the sound of my voice. Anyone that wants you to go down, they will go down for you. In the name of Jesus. Every hand prepared in this second half to pull you down, to stagnate your life, and to catch your glory. I command fire to locate that hand. I command the hand to dry in the name of Jesus. As God liveth and the Spirit liveth. The Spirit of wisdom that sets someone apart. The Spirit of wisdom that is stronger and better than strength and the weapon of war. Let it fall upon everyone. Under the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus. Father, do so. In the name of Jesus. Father, do so. In the name of Jesus. You will not be stupid. You will not be a fool. I will not be a fool. In the name of Jesus. As we journey through this week and this second half of the year, I decree and I declare we will manifest the great and mighty wisdom of God in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Thank you, Daddy, for our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we are freed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's raise our hands to our pastor. Let's begin to prophesy this life. Begin to pray for our pastor. The message was so powerful. Let's begin to have for wisdom, the divine wisdom of, of God upon him this morning in the name of Jesus. The fresh anointing from above that the Lord should release upon him in the name of Jesus. That, let's begin to pray that God will give him the wisdom that will be able to rule. He will be able to control in this very land in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray for him. As I pray for him, you are praying for yourself. Let's pray that God should not grant him the war of fire. That no attack will be able to penetrate into his house, into his life in the name of Jesus. That the Lord will guide and protect him in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray. That the anointing of God upon his head will never run dry. The Lord will renew this anointing upon him day by day. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray for him. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's dip our hands to our pocket this morning. As we bring that something good unto the Lord. The Bible says, Give and shall be given unto you. Good may us shake it together. Let's give out something good unto the Lord this morning. So let's begin to pray unto our own. Let's lift it, let's lift it up. Pray unto him. Tie it with something. Don't just give. I don't know your heart desire. I don't know what you have been praying for. Begin to tie it to this offering. God, as I'm giving you this token, that Lord, this is what I want you to do for me. Begin to say it to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's, if you want to drop the offering, please dance. I want you to dance. Before you drop your offering, hallelujah. We bring it down. Our dancing offering unto the Lord. We bring this dancing to the Lord. We bring this dancing to the Lord.
that we have reason to thank to testify to your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As they are going down the Lord this way, God, I pray God you will go with us in Jesus. Amen. There is darkness out there, out there, Lord, but we've been our light in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In this week, Lord, you will open your hands unto us, Lord, Lord, and we shall be satisfied in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for answering our prayer. Thank you, Hallelujah be to your name, Lord, in Jesus. Amen. For in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Uh, before we go, we are not going to go without uh, acknowledging uh, our, our brother uh, that fellowship with us for the first time. So I want us to welcome him. I want us to celebrate him. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome. God bless you. You are welcome in the name to see you and we know that the God of restoration will bring restoration Amen. to your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the house where we pray and we get results and whatever prayer you might have prayed, the Almighty God will give you results and testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. As God liveth and is believed, this is a place of new identity. God will give you new identity in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Almighty God will establish you in faith. Amen. We establish you in holiness and in righteousness in the name of Jesus. And His presence will never depart from you. Amen. We are glad to see you. Uh, let me see you after the service. God bless you in the name of Amen. Jesus. Our Father, we commit your son unto thy care. Fellowship with us in this house. The house of new identity and unlimited testimony. I pray as you walk into this house, that he had prayed for first time miracle. That he give unto him in the name of Jesus. Amen. That he had prayed with surprise in this week. That he had prayed whatever might be an issue in his life. That he, you will settle it in the name of Jesus. Amen. That he, you will cause your light to shine upon him in the name of Jesus. Amen. That he, you will meet him at the point of need Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Daddy, for saying our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Let's listen to this announcement before we go. By the grace of God, the first Saturday in the month of August is going to be one year that we have our Tumishu Lua and we are going to pray. Please and please, as many of us uh, that can make it, I want us to be in house. It's going to be one day with the Lord. It's going to be one day with what? With one day with the Lord. We are going to have four sessions of prayer. We are going to have 9 to 10, 12 to 1, 3 to 4, and we are going to have 6 to 7. It's going to be demanding what your miracle needs to be to be agreed as well. So if it's only one session you can attend, you can come. If it's only two, you can come. If you want to attend all, you are welcome. If you know anyone that is looking for the fruit of the womb, between 12 and 1, we are going to have that section, which is going to be second section. And for between 3 and 4, breakthrough, financial breakthrough, we are going to have that. And between 6 and 7, we are going to have family deliverance. So please, I want you to be ready. I want you to prepare for it. We are going to be in the presence of God. And let's see the problem that refused to go in your life. Let's see how, how they are going to remain after that very program. And let's begin to pray for it. And it's going to be thou at loose. That's the thing. That's the thing that God gave us. And please, and please, let's share it around. The flyer will come out shortly. And I want us to share it. Let's make it. And God 
uh, we we turn our situation around in the name of Jesus. Amen. I told us a lot of people from outside they come into this house, they are getting miracle, and I want even everyone in this house to have testimony too, Amen. so that it's not just going to be it's not going to be outside coming taking it, and people that are here are not getting anything. Uh, let to her did not be lost to us. Uh, the first, the first miracle yeah. belongs to each and every one of us. And it's your turn to testify in the yeah. name of Jesus. So I want you to rise up and I want you to talk to God. Let's not forget tomorrow we are meeting for prayers. We are meeting tomorrow for prayers. And it's going to be concerning our children and us too. So we want to pray that prayer and God will answer us. But I want you to commit this week that God's I don't want this thing this week. Tell it to God. What you don't want, tell it to God. And whatever you want, tell it to God. I want to use your mouth to describe divine, design your week. Design your week with your mouth. What you want, and that's what you are going to see. If you believe what I'm saying now, what you want this week is what you are going to see. Do you have a typical supervisor? You can tell God that God, I don't want to meet him this week. And God can do it. Anyone that will make life difficult for me this week, Father, please reroute them from my way. Anyone that will make life, that will make it easy, that will connect me to them, O Lord. Let this week be the best week. Let this week be better than last week for me. In the name of Jesus, begin to talk to God. What do you want? Every hand that is closed against my life, let them be open this week. Every heart that is closed, let them be open. Every eye that is closed, let them be open. Every heaven that is closed, let them be open. Every door that is closed, let them be open. I want to walk in abundance of health. Abundant of favor, abundant of joy, abundant of peace this week in the name of Jesus. Whatever I set my hand upon, I want it to prosper in the name of Jesus. Every door that I know this week, let them be open in the name of Jesus. Whatever door the enemy has opened for me, let them be permanently closed in the name of Jesus. It shall be easy for me this week. It shall be easy for me. Things that are hard for others to do, it will be easy for me and my family in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We give you glory because you are God. That we magnify you because you never fail. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. I therefore pray, oh Lord my God. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. That whatever they desire, whatever that belongs unto them, whatever Lord my God, that that have been long awaited for in their life, this will let it come in the name of Jesus. The unexpected good news. Let it come our way this week in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Any battle that want to join in with you this week, I command the air to waste them, the fire of God to waste them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let the air open his mouth and swallow them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let the angel of God arise and defend you this week yeah. in the name of Jesus. I decree ease yeah. upon everyone's life. Yeah. This week it shall be easy for yeah. you. Thing that was difficult last week shall be easy Amen. this week. Anyone that will make life difficult for you, God will take them far away Amen. from you. And those that will make things easy for you, God will connect you with Amen. them in the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Thank you, Daddy, for sending our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And we say the grace together. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. God bless you in the name of Jesus. We'll see you tomorrow by the grace of God.